SQL relationships, pushing from GitHub to Firebase hosting, Angular 2, Google Cloud, and securing user data, all on today's episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. What's up everybody, David here, and little known fact about me, I once broke my leg in the middle of the wilderness and I had to crawl back two miles, half of which was like up a river, and uh, yeah, hashtag true story. But we've been getting a ton of questions this week on YouTube, Twitter, Stack Overflow, and if you want your question answered next week, make sure to use the hashtag Ask Firebase. But uh, let's get into this week's questions. There's, there's no coffee in here. So Santosh on Twitter asks, are there any video tutorials of Firebase login using Google on the web? Well, Santosh, you can actually subscribe to this YouTube channel and we'll send you updates every time we post a new tutorial. Yeah, YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Firebase. And I have it on good authority that there will be a video on using Firebase email and password login for the web pretty soon, and if you wait just a bit longer, you might just find one for Google in the web. Let's go to the next question. Eduardo on Twitter asks, how can I create relations, like making a friend request, adding users, or blocking someone? So the real-time database is a NoSQL database, so it doesn't have relations like a SQL database would, but the key concept to understand is the shared key. So imagine your data structure of users, and users contains your entire list of users, like in this case, we have the user of David and this user of Alice. And let's say I wanna represent that David is friends with Alice in this social network. Well, to do that, I have this friendships node, and then I can share the key of David, which is the same key that's underneath the user's key. And then this way I can say that David has the friendships with Alice just by using Alice's key, which is the same key you see over here from underneath users. And to access this data using the Firebase JavaScript SDK, we just create a reference to the friendships key using that user's key, and that way we get all of the users back that that person is friends with. So there's no real relationships or foreign keys or anything like that in a NoSQL database, but if you share that same key while you're structuring your data, it's gonna make your life a lot easier and a lot easier for you to be able to represent these relationship type structures. Excellent question. Let's go to the next one. On Twitter, Interplato asks, what's the best way to push to Firebase hosting for a repo hosted on GitHub? Well, Interplato, the Firebase CLI has a specific method that gives you a key for CI continuous integration systems to use like Travis. So in the Firebase CLI, you just type Firebase login colon CI, and this will take you through a bit of a login process, but once you've finished, you will have this key. And then if you go into the Travis configuration for your GitHub repo, you put that in and you give it a label of Firebase token or something like that. And then now in your Travis YAML, after a successful deployment, you can run the script Firebase deploy dash dash token and then use that label right there. So whatever private variable you need. And really that's all it is. So it's just set up the secret key in Travis, push to the repo, and then boom, you've deployed to Firebase hosting. So thank you, Interplato. That was a great question. Hey, let's see what's up next. So Richard on YouTube asks, I'm building an application where users can choose to share their user-generated data. And my question is, how do I ensure authentication and security by only letting authorized users access that data? Well, thank you for your question, Richard. What you are looking for is a whitelist. Let's say you're gonna make a note-taking app where you want to have a user create a note and then they can share that with only the people they invite you know, to see that note. And so the data structure for the notes would you know, just be a simple list of notes. And so we have two notes in this list and each note has properties that describe you know, who owns this note and the text that makes up this note. Now this tells me what each note you know, is, but it doesn't tell me who can access this note. And to do that, I can create a whitelist node. And so each item underneath this whitelist is the same key for that note. And then what we can do inside here is say, okay, which users have access to this note? And so user one in this case does, as well as user four. And then now that we have this whitelist, we can write a security rule that only lets users on that whitelist read the note. 
So in our security rules, we can essentially say, when we see a note, let's go to the whitelist and check to see if that user belongs to the whitelist. If they do, we'll let them read it. If not, we're gonna to totally reject it and they can't access it. So just know that if you're ever in a situation where you want to secure a piece of data to only a specific set of users, that you wanna use a whitelist. So thanks, Richard. So that was a great question. Let's go and move on to the next one. Carlos on YouTube asks, which folder do I have to use to deploy an Angular 2 app? Well, Carlos, you're actually not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or you know, you get it. A lot of people have asked me this question and it's a pretty common mistake. So what I recommend doing is using the Angular CLI because the Angular CLI uses a common folder that it builds your applications to. And that folder's name is just dist. So when you're setting up your Firebase project by using Firebase init, you specify dist as your public folder. And then after that, Carlos, all you really have to do is a Firebase deploy and you have your Angular 2 app on the web. So uh, let's see what the next question is. This is the easy one. Some random guy on YouTube, no, seriously, his name, screen name is actually some random guy. He asked, will you have an Angular 2 Firebase tutorial out in the near future? Well, some random guy, Jeff Cross and I are still working on the library, so it is a work in progress. And once we get some things tidied up, we will definitely have some screencasts and blog posts and all that great stuff. But for now, if you wanna stay up to date, then follow the GitHub repo at github.com slash angular slash angular fire. And you can read all of the issues, you can check out the documentation we have so far, and that should get you up to speed. So some random guy, if you want to check that repo out, just go to the link in the description and head on over to GitHub and we will work on getting those tutorials out to you as soon as possible. Excellent question and I think we got one more. Mr. Happy asked on YouTube, Mr. Happy, great screen name. So Mr. Happy asked, which Google Cloud services work with Firebase? BigQuery, machine learning, compute engine? Well, Mr. Happy, the main integration is with Firebase Analytics and BigQuery. So Firebase Analytics is a free, unlimited analytics tool that's built specifically for apps. And it collects tons of crazy, awesome information like your average revenue per user, your total number of active users. It can even tell you which app version your users are on, what version of the operating system they're using. And you can take all of this data and just export it all out to BigQuery, which is great at crunching those numbers and giving you insights to that data where you can run crazy powerful queries on that. And you can run the real-time database server SDKs on Google Compute Engine. So Mr. Happy, great question and great screen name. So uh, let's move on to the next question. So Music A asked on YouTube, how do I download files with Firebase storage to a specific folder on an Android device? Well, Music A, Firebase Storage has a method for you to download files to a local temp file. And to do that, you just create a reference out to that file in Firebase Storage. Then you call the method file.createTempFile. And then from there, all you have to do is call getFile on the reference and then add a success listener. And when that success listener fires, you have yourself a local file. So Music A, it's just as simple as creating a reference and then downloading it to a temp file. And another question. I really hope I say this person's name right. Batbyar asks on YouTube, Firebase, you guys are great. Firebase is so awesome. How do I sort posts in my database by number of likes or by date. I'm building an iOS app and I'm trying to show the latest and most liked posts in the top of a table view. Well, bat by R, thank you and you're awesome too. So if you're building an iOS app, you're gonna want to use Firebase UI because it can bind your real-time database references to a table view, which makes your life a whole lot easier. So really what you need to do is you need to create a reference to your list of posts. Then you can use one of our querying methods. And so in your case, you can query ordered by value of likes. So this will sort everything by the like value. Or if you need to sort everything by the date to get the most recent, you can do a query ordered by the timestamp as well. And from there, you just take this query reference and then you just pass that off to Firebase UI and that'll bind it right to your table view. So bat by R, all you have to know is just query your reference and then pass it off to Firebase UI. So I think we have another question. Fawad asks on YouTube, tutorial on Polymer Fire Element? 
well, Fawad, and everybody else interested for that matter, if you want to see a tutorial on polymer fire, you should tweet at Rob Dotson, hey, Rob, where's the polymer fire cast? You and David should totally do one. And I think we can get something working. Thanks, Fawad. So that was a lot of great questions this week, but one question that I commonly get is like, what kind of questions should I be asking? I like to think that the best questions are ones that benefit like everyone who watches. So if you have questions like, how do I best secure my data or structure my data? Or how do I create custom events to target, you know, whatever in Firebase Analytics? Or how do I send a push notification to only this specific type of users? These are all great questions because these are the type of things that multiple people are wondering. So if you have a question that you think can really benefit the community, call it out and just send it to us on Twitter, YouTube, whatever, just hashtag ask Firebase. So that's it for this week. Thank you all so much for sending in your questions. They are seriously so great. Make sure to keep sending them in. Even if you've asked a question, you can go ask another one. It's fine, there's no quota. I mean, there's a bit of a quota. Don't send like a hundred in, but you know, you know what I mean? That's all for this episode. If you want your one answered next week, just make sure to use hashtag ask Firebase and all the social channels. And we will see you here next week, Wednesday at noon on the next episode of hashtag ask Firebase. Let's all tweet at Rob Dodson. Hey, Polymer Firecast? I think so.